Hello and welcome to another one of our micro lectures. This one will be on the rational choice theory application and a little bit of analysis of it to help you understand it better. First of all, the rational choice system is the, really the foundation of the American criminal justice system. Uh, it has been embraced by the general public and to some extent, certainly in the recent past, by many of the criminologists inside the American criminal justice system. Uh, how would we define it? Well, the rational choice uh, theory says that crime is a conscious decision arrived at by an individual after they consider alternatives and elect to commit a criminal act. Or, if we put it in the simplest possible way, Crime occurs because people decide to commit crime. The origins of this theory lie with an Italian named Cesare Becerra. He is seen as the father of rational choice, and he was part of the whole Enlightenment movement. Uh, he wrote primarily in the 1760s, and his books, uh, famously his material on uh, rational choice were uh, read by Thomas Jefferson. Rational choice has some practical applications uh, to the American criminal justice system, specifically two that are very important to us, the idea of general deterrence and the idea of specific deterrence. General deterrence is the idea that if you create a high probability of capture and punishment, this will prevent members of a group from committing a crime. Uh, famously, the Marquis of Halifax said, men are hanged not for stealing horses, but that horses may not be stolen. Uh, from the movie uh, with Paul Newman, Judge Roy Bean, you have uh, Paul Newman, who is playing Judge Roy Bean, say, you have until sundown to get out of town to an outlaw. The outlaw replies, but I don't have a horse. And he says, well, you better steal one, and you better steal a fast one because we hang horse thieves. Specific determinants, then, is the application of the threat of punishment and capture to the individual. And as opposed to the group, this will prevent just him um, from committing future crimes. So punishment is to impact the future, not to punish for past actions. <clears throat> Crime, then, doesn't pay because individuals engage in a cost-benefit analysis. Under rational choice, if this theory is true, people decide it's dangerous to commit crimes as a group, general deterrence, and then specifically, I won't commit a crime because I'm likely to get caught and punished. Uh, there was a lot of support for this theory by the 1980s, the get tough approach to crime. Uh, we see lots of support with individuals like Derek Cornish and Ronald Clark. However, um, there was little empirical support that people are truly that rational. And psychologically, the evidence is uh, pretty decisive that people are not. They don't always act rationally. We have individual scientists like Donald Green and Ian Shapiro, and then famously the publication of The Limits of Rationality that really brought into serious question whether Becerra's theories and its application are true. Today, as greater evidence has been presented that humans are not strictly rational, it has become necessary that we refine this theory, that we change it. Um, we have reached a consensus in the scientific community that people are not strictly rational. So we need to look to external things like environmental factors, uh, psychological factors. The general public, however, is very enamored with the idea of rational choice and continues to embrace it and to apply it via politicians. However, even those supporting the idea of rational choice are willing to implement programs that are focused more on external factors like environmental factors. It may be because they can see that as part of general deterrence, uh, but situational crime prevention, something we'll talk about in another lecture, is one of the practical applications of this modified uh, rational choice theory. If you want to do some future readings about this, uh, here is a link to the rational choice uh, theory article. This should open a new window if you click on it. 
the link is http uh, backslash backslash criminal slash justice dot um, i research net dot com backslash criminology backslash thero, uh, theories backslash ratio, rational choice theory two links to scholarly criticism in the article uh, you can find that at https um, backslash backslash world wide web dot hg dot org backslash legal articles slash backslash rather rational choice as a theory of crime and uh, uh, all those will be separated by a dash and uh, 38 193 at the end deterrence theory which should open a new window for you uh, the link here is uh, www.uscourts.gov backslash sites backslash default backslash file backslash 80 underline 3 underline 4 underline 0 PDF um, if you need to do some studying here are some quick uh, quick definitions I emphasize that you should go back and review the a little bit more detailed of them rational choice is defined as individuals alone uh, choose to commit crimes by a rational process of decision-making uh, general deterrence is the idea that crime can be deterred by making everyone aware that they will be caught and punished if they break the law. Specific deterrence is the idea that individuals can be prevented from committing crime if they think they will be caught and punished. And cost-benefit analysis is the idea that human decisions are rationally arrived at by weighing the possible benefits against.